So it's turned out to be a pretty nice night. The sky is clear, as clear as, as it has been for quite some time. Um, what I thought I'd do is go through the procedure for doing a polar alignment, which is something I had only just figured out in the last week or so. So uh, let's start by getting everything up and running. I'm connected to power. I'm gonna switch on my hub, make sure all of my ports are enabled. I'm gonna switch on the telescope. There it is. Okay, turn it on. Might as well turn on my uh, finder scope, my red dot finder. Make sure that works. Yep, I've got the little red dot. My camera, I believe, was already on. And I have power on my ASI 294MC Pro. I should be good to go. Connected with my laptop. Okay. Now I need to bring up some software. Now, I'm going to try to enable screen capture on OBS Studio so that I can uh, get the steps going on the screen as well. Uh, one second. All right, I've got my recording on. There we go. I don't know what this is gonna do for the performance of my laptop. I don't think I've ever tried recording an OBS session while running everything else in the background. So we'll see what happens. Okay, step one. Let's get CPWI up and running. And already I've made a mistake, or rather I forgot something. I need to go and grab my uh, game controller so that I can control the laptop, or rather control the telescope. Okay, connecting hand controller. Okay, yeah, set this camera down. Go for my game controller. Got it. All right, hope this works. Laptop's a little finicky with this thing once in a while. It uh, won't connect. Let's see if we get a signal. Come on, okay, we've got life. So uh, here is an Xbox controller. I have it connected through CPWI to my mount. And uh, the super useful feature here is that you can control the telescope with the controller. And uh, anyone who's ever had to look through that little red dot finder while trying to uh, do a polar alignment or any kind of alignment with CPWI, well, <laughs> it's not fun. So this makes that much easier. So I'm gonna point the telescope to where south usually is. And I'm slightly off to my sticker there. That should be it right there. And then that looks pretty close. Oh, right. and there it is. Okay, good to go. So now we can start with a alignment. Okay, point your telescope so that it's parallel to the wedge plate, approximately due south. Check. Okay, select the target. Uh, zoom out. And sure, why don't we go for Regulus? So we'll pick Regulus. And let's go to Regulus. Okay, so that should be Regulus. Now let's see if we're seeing Regulus. Now to do that, I probably should have had this going beforehand. But let's start up a couple of things. I'm going to start off PhD guiding, or PhD2 guiding. And let's connect that up. Connect all. It's going to connect my SV Bonnie guide camera and my CPWI software. Okay. Um, let's enable the view.
All right, so we have a star in the bottom corner here. That might be Regulus. Uh, now let's view the bullseye grid, make things easier to spot. So this would be way out of the field of view of my cooled camera. Uh, I'll start up APT. And I'm already connected. Just gonna go to live view, live view. Okay. Come on, live view. Why am I not seeing live view? Okay, live view is on. You know what? It's on, but we're just not seeing anything right now. I still have the Batnov mask on my scope, and I just saw something fly by in front. So yeah, we do have a signal. Um, all right, that's two. And let's start up backyard Nikon while we're at it. All right, back here at Nikon. Let that load up in the background. Back to CPWI. Uh, let's see whether or not we can get that star into the center. So to do that, I've got my red dot finder on. I'm gonna use my controller. And looking through the red dot finder, oh yeah, I see, I'm off by a little bit. Nope, oh, I overshot. Okay, that's better. I should have a star, and there it is. It is much closer to where it should be. Okay. Now this is a shaky pier. That's what I call it. It shakes when I walk on the deck. Uh, so, where is that? Okay. Oh, there's my Batnoff mask. It's on. Um, looks like the star is drifting across my field of view. Uh, why is that? Is my tracking enabled? Telescope. Yep, tracking is enabled. Configure mount. I am in a sidereal mode, right ascension only, and I'm just going to make sure my cord wrap is enabled, and accept. Alright, now let's center this. I'm going to enable the crosshairs, and change my weight to 4. Now, the joystick controller is pretty good if you're looking through the red dot finder, but uh, for fine controls on screen, I find it's actually easier just to see the slew controls. Okay, there we go. got some drift happening here because of backlash. I'm going to clear that by going the other way. And let's go bring the star down a bit. Now I left my Batnov mask on so that I can do a quick uh, focus while I'm here. I'm gonna get this as much to the center as I can. There it is. Okay, now the Batnov mask is telling me that this is pretty close to in focus, but not quite. So I am going to go into my focus controls bring up my focus control panel and 
first of all, I'm just going to bump this up by five. Okay, I'm going 90. And see where that goes. Okay, there goes my focus motor, in and out. Okay, looking at the results. Uh, I think that moved it a bit closer. Let's uh, move it five more. Now I could step the focus motor until I have alignment and I might do that next. It's 95, 96, 204. Yep, we're getting closer. 207, 209. Oh, look at that. That is pretty darn close. Let's do a couple more. Whoop, that overshot. No. Looks like it overshot, but the pattern looks good to me. Okay. Let's hide the focus controls. And since I've done the Batnov focus already, I'm going to take the Batinov mask off of the scope. So I've got this little tab here I made out of tape, which makes it easier to remove the mask uh, when the telescope is high up here. All right. So uh, the reason I do it this way is um, you can nudge the telescope. You can actually shift the alignment if you try to take off the uh, dew shield, the dew cap, to remove the Batmoth mask. So doing it this way, um, I can do my alignment after I've done my primary focus. So let's bump this down to three. And bring that star back into the center. So truth is, you don't have to be super exact with this step, uh, but it helps to be as accurate as you can be. Uh, the more accurate you are here, the easier that the PHD2 drift alignment is going to be. So how does this work, All right? This first step is pretty straightforward. This is what, what we all do with CPWI. We do a three, four, five star alignment and that gives the mount a pretty good model of where things are in the sky. Did I overshoot? This thing is a little finicky. You know what, I'm just gonna leave it where it is right here and go to the next star. Uh, what makes a difference is the ASPA that's done afterwards. All right, so the ASPA, what that does is once you've done your primary alignment, the ASPA um, kind of tells you if your alignment was perfect, where would the stars actually be? And by doing that, right, you do your ASPA, in that part, uh, what you do is you manually shift or you manually adjust your um, mount position, adjusting your, your declination and your right ascension knobs to 
point the uh, mount where the pointing model is telling you that the star should be if you have the right alignment. And that's, that's the magic piece right there, but it's not quite everything. Okay, so let's, let's pick the next star, let's go to Arcturus. Right, the last piece of alignment is actually drift alignment. What drift alignment does is it uses PHD2 to tell you which way things are drifting um, because your alignment is off or if your alignment is off. And we'll have a look at that at the end. But basically by tweaking your uh, mount controls, your declination, your right ascension, you can really zero in on, on pretty good alignment. Okay, so Arcturus, are we looking at Arcturus? Well, I'm guessing that's it right here. Uh, so let's use our slew controls and get Arcturus into the center. Okay, so it's not perfectly centered, but it's close enough, and that will allow drift alignment to, to fix whatever uh, misalignment we have. All right, let's go find something on the other end of the sky. There's Mars. What about Beetlejuice? Let me find Beetlejuice. I don't know if it's out of sight. Okay, Beetlejuice. We might be out of luck. That's gonna be pointing right at the house. Let's see. Well, it's not pointing at the house, but I don't see Beetlejuice. But this is where I think it'll be helpful to have the controller. Okay, that's gonna be difficult to see. All right. been really really tricky if I had to come around here and press the slew controls on my laptop okay Beetlejuice let's see you in APT don't overshoot Ooh, close. All right. Is the backlash going to catch up before we overshoot the center? Nope. There it goes. And it's still gone. But not by far. Right, let's bring it back the other way. I should not have pressed that twice. Uh, well, that's the best alignment we've had yet. Okay, CPWI. And centered. So we've got three stars. Um, I think that's good enough. Let's head into a all-star polar alignment. So I'll click finish here and perform ASPA. So to perform the ASPA, 
We're gonna have to find a star that's relatively low down to the horizon. And hopefully somewhere fairly close. We can go with our part, off hard, off hard, out hard. I don't know how you pronounce that. Let's go with this one. It's fairly bright, should be easy to spot. Yeah, if you guys can hear the coyotes here. Yeah, we got some coyotes. And if I'm not mistaken, I might have a skunk living underneath my deck. So, if the skunk shows up, that'll be fun too. He may have evicted my rabbit. Okay. There is Alphard. Alphard. I'm just going to call it the star. There is the star. And we're not quite in the center. Mostly because the pointing model is not fully accurate yet. But at least it's in the ballpark. Okay, let's get this lined up. And here's what's going to happen. Okay. These things are loud. I can hear them yipping in the background. Okay, this one we're gonna try to get as accurate as we can, and we overshot. I shouldn't have said that. All right, go back the other way, pick up the slack. Oh, we're just gonna be going back and forth here. This is painful. Okay. I've got some slight drift happening, but a little more. Come on, get in there. And it's gonna keep drifting. No, okay, that is, that's as close as what I've got patience for right now. Okay, now here's what's gonna happen. We're centered, we're gonna press centered, and the telescope is gonna slew away and it's going to point to where it thinks the star should be if we had the right polar alignment. So that happened. Now we have to adjust the alignment knobs until the star is centered within the telescope again. And wow, the star is completely gone. Our alignment is way off. Okay, so if we are that far off, actually, let's see if we can see this in the PhD2 field of view. Uh, okay, so pH2 field of view, it's down here. That is the star. So we are too high right now. We need to lower the telescope a little bit. And the best way to do this, you need to be able to see the screen as I'm adjusting the knobs. So I'm just going to set this thing down. One second. Okay, I've turned my laptop so I can see the screen as I adjust the scope. So, here's what we do. We're too low here. Let's turn this knob. Uh, okay, I turned it one way. And I think we are way off now. I'm gonna turn it the other way. Bring that up. Now, that bullseye is actually deceiving because that is not the center of my field of view of my APT camera. So, now let's go to APT. Oh, you know what? I lied. This lineman shifts every time that you set up the scope. Something may have gotten jostled on my guide scope, and it looks like it's actually fairly close. So, oh, now I've overshot it. Go down a little bit. Nope. Go up a little bit. There we are. Okay. Wow, would you look at that? Now, 
I just remembered that I have not turned on my camera to cooling yet. So I'm going to set it to minus 15 and start cooling. But there it is. That is Alphard, the star. Nice. So we have, according to uh, Celestron CPWI, completed our ASPA, All-Star Polar Alignment. So at this point, <clears throat> what you would normally do is redo your alignment now that you're pointing in the right direction um, so that uh, your pointing model is much more accurate. But if this alignment were correct, then uh, our right ascension would follow and track stars exactly without any uh, trailing or trailing without any uh, what is the word I'm looking for well without the star drifting there we go okay but there's only one way to be really sure of that and that is to follow this up with a PhD2 drift alignment okay <clears throat> so to do a drift alignment we go into tools and drift align. Now, what it wants us to do is slew to the nearest meridian and the equator. Or slow to near the meridian, not the nearest meridian. <laughs> slow to the meridian and the equator. All right, and then press drift to measure the drift. So this is kind of a repetitive process. Let's go to CPWI, and we need to drift or come to the meridian. And this is going to be close. Uh, Regulus is pretty close. There is another star here that seems fairly close. Let's go get this one. So we'll go to. Okay. We're there. Yeah, we've got a couple of stars showing here. Very good. Now let's click on drift. Now what's going to happen is <clears throat> the graph is going to go and here we're going to have to adjust the azimuth controls, meaning the uh, left and right until the declination line is level. So the declination line right now is, is showing in red and it is sloping. <clears throat> so you can see the adjustments being made to right ascension. That's the blue line. Uh, it's kind of bouncing a little bit between uh, plus four and minus four. So we are a bit high. So we need to adjust the azimuth. The azimuth controls are these guys right here. So let's do that. Okay, my camera got turned off there again, but what I did there is I went through another round of uh, adjusting. So I just pressed adjust so that I could go a little bit further uh, to the left, turning the right ascension. So um, I'm going to press drift and what we're trying to do is beat 0.52 okay now usually it's going to take the mount a little bit of time to calm down wow look at that line early on it's just all over the place that needs to settle Make it worse. I think it did. Now we're looking at 0.55. Oh, 
is dropping though. Could that just be because our right ascension was off? 0.49. Okay, where is it going to go to now? It's going low. It's trending low. Yeah, it's trending low now. It's 0.59, but it's trending in the other direction. So I'm going to reverse that. Is it going to even out? It's just slightly low. All right, let's adjust it. And I've made the mistake of forgetting to press the adjust button before I made that change, which just threw off my uh, tracking altogether. All right, let's drift again. And we're gonna wait and see what happens. Well, my camera is dying here. Interesting thing to note, this purple circle tells you how much of an error you have, how close you are in alignment. And what you want to do is be right as close to that center as you possibly can. All right, I can tell the right ascension is still kind of looping all over the place. The declination is still showing low, but it could recover. Give it a moment. 0 0.49, 0 0.48. That's not terrible. I've seen worse. It's, it's kind of going up again. Just slightly low. Okay, I'm going to tweak it one more notch back and see what happens. Just barely a nudge. And again, I forgot to press the adjust button. Uh, That's okay, you don't, you don't really need to, it's just the adjust button lets the tracking pause so you don't get that loss of uh, star lost error message. I could be mistaken, but that's, that's the sense I get. Okay, let's see what happens here. Okay, now it's kind of oscillating between high and low. It's high, now it's low. But look at this section of the graph right here. All right, it looks like it's bouncing at less than two, or around two right now. It is, we are at the meridian, and we're not very high either in terms of declination. But that line I don't know if it's going to look any better than it is right now. Oh, that is close. That is really close. Okay, I'm gonna call this one done, and now we go on to altitude. So to do the altitude, uh, we now have to slew to a star towards the horizon. So uh, slew to a location near the equator and the eastern or western horizon. So to do that, let's go find something Zoom out here a little bit. There's the equator. There's Orion. We know that's out of view. But there's a star. HR2335. Let's go find HR2335. Look 
Okay, hopefully that will not be hidden by a house. Um, we just need something in that vicinity. It doesn't have to be that exact star. It would be nice if it was. Okay, here we are. Now let's do drift. So here it says sleuth, then you're okay. We are near the equator uh, and we're at the horizon. Press drift to measure drift. Watch the declination trend again. And then adjust the altitude. And now we're going to be adjusting the altitude knob. Now look over here, that purple circle is really all over the place. So even though at the meridian and the equator we're good, now at the equator and at the uh, western horizon we are just all over the place. Wow, look at that. I mean, the year is 1.7. Would think it would be much worse, but look at this whole thing trending right down here. So, our star is fading out of view. So, I'm going to tweak this. Uh, nope, I'm not going to tweak it. I learned my lesson. I'm going to press adjust first and then I'm going to tweak it. And these are very small adjustments, so I'm just going to do a small little there we go. Let's see what happens here. So, I turned it to the right. We were looking at a downward slope at about a 2.65 error. Let's do drift now and see what happens. Is it going to be better or worse? All right. Uh, yeah. Is it better? Maybe. Maybe slightly better. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that process a few times. I'm gonna say it's slightly better, not great. So I'm gonna adjust this again. See now the error is 2.17, 2.24, All right, I'm gonna pause the recording because I do have to uh, recharge my battery. And I'm gonna go through this a few more cycles. Okay, I've gone through a few iterations. And here we are. That's actually me stepping. Uh, on the deck, that's caused those variations. Uh, but what I wanna do here is plug my charger in. Unplug my dew heater. There, there we go. Dew heater plugged in or unplugged. And camera plugged. What are we looking at? Look at that. We are, well, we're not doing good. We're actually climbing right now. Why is that? So we have a larger and we are climbing. Let's press adjust. And let's go the other way, slightly. All right, and drift. What's happening here? Oh, lines are all over the place. That red declination line is just shooting straight through the roof. Why is that happening? That was a very small adjustment that we just made. We may have to go back the other way. This can be pretty finicky. Oh, it's going back down. 
It's leveling off at least. Well, maybe something wonky happened. Let's clear this. Yep, nice and easy process. Just see which way those lines go. It is trending up. All right, I'm gonna press adjust. And I'm gonna tweak it the other way. There we go. And now let's do a drift see what happens. Okay. Lines are not converging yet. Well, at least not converging in the right direction. Come on. You're too high. Go lower. Trending up. Alright, may have overshot it. Oh, this is not good. Alright, adjust. And again. Let's take it further back and drift. All right, circle's getting slightly smaller and then bigger. All right, well, that's looking better, but not great. We're still sloping. Let it go longer, but that's a pretty definitive slope. All right, adjust. Put a turn here. That may have been too much of a turn. Drift. Yeah, that was too much of a turn. Way too much of a turn. All right, adjust. And drift. Hmm. Maybe I went the wrong way. Whatever we're doing, the purple circle is just getting worse. Okay. 
Okay. I'm gonna go out on a limb and crank this back quite a bit. Now this is going to be either really bad. Oh yeah, that is really bad. That is straight up in the air. <laughs> okay, we've obviously been going in the wrong direction. All right, adjust. Well, that seems better. It's not great. But declination is now around 0 0.75. 0 0.86, 1. All right, it's hovering back and forth. 1, 1 1.12. But we are in the right direction, I think. Okay, let's click adjust. I think we're hitting a house here. We have to pick up on a different star. Let's move back a notch to these guys here. Oh, that's not a star. Well, maybe there'll be a star field when we get there. at there's a star field and let's notch this one more okay a little bit and drift What is it doing? It's going down. So we are trending down. Not drastically. The lines are kind of converging. And again, looking at the error here, plus or minus four, we seem to be at about plus or minus two and a half, maybe two, less. That's not bad. That line is really close. There of 0.48. I think that did it. Okay, I'm gonna call it. That is the alignment. All right, so what's next is uh, just slewing back to uh, facing south, redoing an alignment, and then we're good to go. Okay, let's get the telescope pointing back south. really in that vicinity. How about here? All right, now we should be able to do a regular alignment and that pointing model is the one that we're going to go with to start our session. All right, slew controls, there they are. Let's bring the 
scope right to the center where the meridian meets the equator. All right, it is cold out here. <clears throat> Okay, there we are. Alignment. We're going to delete the current alignment. We'll do a new alignment. Manual alignment. Begin. We are in position. Let's find the star. Denebula. Sure. Let's go to Denebula. That's not what we wanted to do at all. Alignment. Not sure what happened there. Delete alignment. Perform. Begin. Ready. And then that ball. Alright, now we're going over. Do we have the nebula anywhere in our field of view? Uh, that might be it. Okay. Let's get that into the center. So I'm not surprised that we are this close because we just did not just the polar alignment, uh, or rather the alignment, the ASPA, and we did the drift alignment, and we were right at the uh, south facing point where we started so the telescope slewed pretty well spot on to the star we're looking for all right get in there Ah, now we're bouncing back and forth. Oh, our cooling aid finished. Close that down. Oh, too far. Now again, do we have to be super exact here? The more exact we are, the better our pointing model is going to be and the easier it's going to be for the mount to find our targets. So, yeah, we do wanna be pretty close here. Okay, that is close. Centered. All right, let's pick another target. How about... I usually go for Alcade or Alioth. Let's go with Alcade. Be it right there. Yep. See, right away we're finding things much easier.
All right, that is close. Close enough for what I need. Centered. And now let's take something off on the other side. How about... What's this? Hey, Procyon. All right, let's go with Procyon. And Canis Minor. I'm just doing the way over. Don't be behind the house. Uh-oh. Where is Procyon? I am not seeing Procyon. All right. Well, this is where, once again, Found it. Okay. There it is. I just need to get her into the center. Reduce my sensitivity. Let's bring this to three. very touchy right now okay here we are and centered okay let's go back to our tours here
right, there's Arcturus. Let's bring that to the center as well. That is a bright star. And I think that's where we're going to save our pointing model and we can get going. Now obviously this takes longer than it would with uh, equatorial mount with a polar scope, but uh, it's what we've got. And if done correctly, it does work. Uh, personally, I, this process, this is my third time doing it. It's taken me about an hour each time. And to end, uh, I hope to get better at it. But the way I see it is I don't pull the telescope out if I'm just going to be out for one night. Uh, what I usually look for is a series of nights. And that's what, where the pier comes in. Uh, a telescope sits on the pier. I cover it during the day. I work from home often, so it's not an issue for me to leave the telescope out behind the house whenever I do have a couple of days of sessions. And that makes it worthwhile. Okay, centered. Let's uh, save the alignment. I'm just going to press finish here. Cancel. Finish. And then save. Okay, good to go. Now I have one more thing that I would like to do typically, and that is to uh, align my DSLR as well. And I'll need to turn on my dew heater for my DSLR if it has not fogged over already. So first things first, let me connect my DSLR to Backyard Nikon. All right, I'm connected. And here, let's go into frame and focus. Now we are looking at a very bright star right now, which means this should be perfect for uh, doing an alignment. So I'm gonna bump this up to 6400. Uh, let's go to imaging. Duration, mark that down as three seconds. Oh, my ISO is, I need to change my ISO here. 6,400, three seconds, preview. Wow, I am very out of focus. So, uh, unfortunately, this is manual. Uh, now I just have to adjust. And for this, I'm going to need my back nuff mask. Okay, here's my little back nuff mask. I'm just going to put that on the front of my DSLR. Let's see the preview. Okay. 
Okay, much better. Oh, look at that. That's pretty much spot on. That is as close as I can usually get it with the manual focus on a DSLR. It's very twitchy. So I'm gonna leave it like it is. I'm just going to take off the bat and off mask and I would consider that good to go. So I put a little tie through bad off mask so that I can lift it off the camera with uh, the dew shield on. Okay. What's next? So we've got this good to go. Um, now tonight I'm gonna be shooting the Whirlpool Galaxy. So that is M51. Whirlpool Galaxy. And this is gonna be my wide field. I'm gonna use Let's see, 800 ISO. Now I do have a light pollution filter on my Nikon. It's Nikon D5200. So I'm gonna bump this up to three minutes, 180 seconds. And I'm gonna let it run for six hours. So let's do 120 frames or exposures. That should be good to go. Here too, uh, M51 Whirlpool, I have that ready to go. Let's go find the Whirlpool Galaxy. Come on. M51. Oh, we've got a bit of wind picking up here, so that's not good. supposed to be a calm night and this telescope has got a large sail on the front end of it so wind is never a friend okay are we looking at what we want to look at let's bring up slew controls and what do we have here I can make it out. Those are the two points of the Whirlpool Galaxy. So, if I bump this up to five seconds at 480 gain, I might be able to see some detail. Oh yeah, there it is. There is the Whirlpool Galaxy right there. That is perfect. Well, it's not perfect, but it's, it's there. So, that tells me at least that our alignment is good. Hopefully, what we did drift-wise with the drift alignment is good too. So I'm going to bump this down to one second again. Okay, I need to move this a little bit closer. is close to centered. Let's just bump it the other way, take up some of that slack. Good to go here. Now we need to do some guiding. So I'm gonna set to multi-star guiding. I am set to multi-star. So I'm just gonna press the find stars button and start guiding. 
let that settle in. I do feel the breeze, so that's not going to be good. But I'm going to select my six hour plan, which is going to do 120 gain, 120 exposures of 180 seconds each, same as my DSLR. So back here at Nikon, start capture. There it goes. And here as well, APT, turn off live view and start. And that's it, we're good to go. And I sure hope this wind doesn't uh, cause too much of a problem. So right now, that's not great. I'm doing half second pulses or half second pulses. I'm doing half second frequency. And so far my error is pretty bad. But that is a bit of gusting, so I'm gonna check on it shortly. All right, okay, it's starting to settle in. That's not terrible. Uh, I can feel that gust. Well, we'll see what happens. I will check on this in a bit. So here I'm using Tiger VNC to check on my laptop remotely. And it looks like the guiding has settled down. The wind has died down and things are tracking pretty well. I've got a total error of 1.35. Uh, seems to be pretty consistent over the past little while. Uh, in terms of where we are, so here's M51. Auto guiding against multiple stars. Dithering is on. Here I've got APT running through a plan and it's dithering right now. And then over here I have backyard Nikon taking wide angle shots. So backyard Nikon. Here's M51 right here. Once these pictures get stacked should be able to make out a little bit more detail. So I will let this run overnight. I'll pick up the frames in the morning, run them through a deep sky stacker. Um, I do my processing in uh, GIMP since uh, it is free. And uh, I will add the results to the end of this video. Wow. 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 Wow.